in this episode we're going to talk about your book you have a book called within normal limits mm -hmm. uh but we're we're going to have a conversation to me i kept thinking back about you i was like so it has to be a little bit true to you as well uh you just mentioned like you 12 years not really leaving the house trying to write the book uh it's about a person that has ms um uh, multiple sclerosis, sclerosis. Yeah. i didn't know how to actually come out with something right like it like what I wanted was not like a journal thing. I wanted an actual output, right? And originally I thought everything I'm going to write, I have kids, right? Whether dad's leaving the house or not, I have kids. I want them to understand why dad's not leaving the house. I'll tell you a funny story. The reason Colorado is so important there, and I've not told anybody this, the reason Colorado is so important there is because I saw a medium once and the medium told me something. Um, gosh, I've never told anybody this. I don't know what MS is going to give me from a from a trajectory perspective. I hope it's more not only for my kids and for the stuff that I enjoy, but to, to hang out with people like you, man, to, to have a good time. Damn, dude. You almost had me. You almost had me. Oh, I forgot. Be... The Chiyon thing. No, no. Well, no, no. I did. Yeah, I forgot about it. Too. But for whatever reason, there's just like that intrinsic thing of like, and I don't know if it's like that Mexican side of me that's just like, oh, yeah, something, you know, something's there. Right, but um, you have a different side of you. No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. But how do you feel on the medicines they give you? Like, are you very trusting with the medicines, tr or with the treatments, uh, or do you question them? There's you don't know, and I think that is the scariest part of MS, is you have no idea. And the original title of the book was The Long Goodbye because I always felt that that unknown factor of MS. Hey, welcome to Too Hard, Too Fast podcast. In this episode, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be a little serious. We're going to be a little funny. We're going to be a little weird. A little chillones probably a little too. A okay. That's cool too. This it might be the first time we are Chionas, or it might be the first time we confess to being Chionas. Oh, okay, okay. But you know what? Uh, in this episode, I am joined by Marco Gam Gamboa. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I asked you off camera if I said it right, and I still thought I messed it up. No, no, no. You said it perfect. Perfect. In this episode, we're going to talk about your book. You have a book called Within Normal Limits, mm -hmm. uh, but we're, we're going to have a conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about... I did read most of your book really <laughs> i'm a slow reader don't judge me uh, i'm a slow reader but you know we'll get into it let's start let's start let's sit back buckle up let's go too hard too fast hey hey guys uh this is marco gamboa um and i am going too hard too fast we're here within normal limits but we're going too hard too fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's 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 talk a little bit about me reading your book. Before we we, we might forget the point of this podcast because I feel like we're gonna have a lot of fun. But um, I am a slow reader. I'm not. It doesn't mean I'm dumb, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just a slow <laughs> reader. Uh, I start thinking about every other thing that I have to do in my life while I'm trying to read. And I have to go back and reread. Um, and not a lot, of, a lot of things capture me. Like, if I'm reading, it's mostly a comic book. <laughs> but um, I'll read different stories or different books. Fiction is, or, is that even a word? It's sounds close contagious. enough. It sounds yeah, like yeah, contagious. Yeah, yeah. Fiction, uh, nonfiction, uh, educational, whatever. If it captures me, I'll read it. It's going to take me a while. Uh, but there are also some really good books that a lot of people like that just don't capture my attention. I'm like, nah, not for me. I'm not an avid reader like that. Um, but I can hear my hear myself breathing. I can hear myself breathing too, but I figured it was the... High blood pressure. <laughs> uh, let me see. I like how you're fixing my blood pressure with the little thing over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your blood pressure just lowered with the volume. <laughs> so did mine. Yeah. 
<clears throat> well, anyways, but um, but when I started reading your book, and my wife made fun of me, I was like, "Do you want me to read it for you? Because you're never <laughs> gonna finish before you. before the podcast." And you know what? It's true. I, I would I I I would have not, and I did not, and she probably should have read it for me. But dude, I was captured on. She's like, "What are you on page 10? Dude, I'm on page thirty. This book is good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's only really 40 good. pages in the book, so no, no, no. <laughs> it was 144, and I counted because I do the same thing as any other kid in school will do. Go to the last page and be like, oh, "Okay, how many pages? Oh my god! All right, let's start." <laughs> how, how how many of the uh, Pizza Hut points does this count towards? You remember that? <laughs> how many AR points? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, dude, I used to. This is how bad it was. Like AR. I don't know if people don't know. Like an accelerator reader in school for us was like. You gather, enough, you read enough books, you take a test, and then you get points, and you can turn in those points for, for rewards. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I started off good. I was like, I'll read these books. Got took the quiz, and then I got my points. But then I realized, dude, these quizzes are super freaking easy. So then I just started taking the quizzes for stuff that I didn't read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I started getting the points, and then that led to me I was like. I don't have to read yeah. to know the answer. And I'm not I'm not uh, narking on my kids or nothing, but there's also YouTube that you can search AR this book and then oh, chingas wow. the sale the the book. The well nowadays question. I guess so, but yeah, yeah, back yeah. then for me, for us, didn't YouTube didn't even exist yet. There was no internet. There was barely no. computers and just programs. Yeah. And so it was just a guessing game and that's how I learned. I was like, I don't have to read everything. And I took that to college. I, that's w- from what I learned in school, high school. I took that to college. I bought books my first semester because that was the thing that you were supposed to do. And never bought books again. Again, yeah. No, I just like paid attention to what the teacher was saying. Tried to look at the underlying message. And then I just guessed in my test and I passed. Yeah. Or I would talk to people or still like I would borrow, steal somebody else's book if I really needed it. Um, but yeah, like never been that into reading, but your book within normal limits, I, um, I, I started reading that and I got to chapter seven. So you're proud. So you're proud. Say something. <laughs> uh, do, and, and men. So, so you're I'm, proud. I'm, I'm super proud. <laughs> I'm super proud. I'm taking you out for fucking ice cream. It's like, <laughs> But uh, you know what it is, man, is I think it first off, I'm not a big reader. I have a friend who does like a book club thing and with her we'll you know, we'll we'll read a ton of books. But I feel like I've lost a little bit of, you know, I'll go through my, you know, my moments where I'll read. But I, I too, am not a big reader. So when someone tells me I read your book. I like it. It means a ton, um, just because I. So I'm brand new to this, and so I think that it just means that you gave away your most precious resource, which is your time, to sit with the guy who wouldn't leave the house for twelve years and wrote this book. So in a weird way, when people tell me like, "Hey, man, I'm reading your book or whatever," like I'm I'm grateful. But I'm also like, dude, how cool that this person's sitting with that person that I used to be. Uh, and it just, it means a lot, man. And uh, and I appreciate it. Whether chapter 7, whether after this you just use it as a book coast or whatever. <laughs> no, no. The chingon. No, no, no. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish reading it because, it, 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 like I said, it captured me and I want to know the end. And that's, I think, I know you gave me points, like uh, certain chapters that I should hit uh, for the podcast or, you know, if I wanted to bring it up on on here but the way my mind works is that i can't skip ahead Mm. uh with anything i do so if i'm gonna do something and and it kind of ties into like when i first read that first chapter and it talks about the first or second when it it talks about the doctor telling marco uh we gotta keep you within normal limits uh and i know that meant obviously health-wise the baseline Mm-hmm. But when I read that, it just hit me to like what people always say to me. Uh, it's like you, you, you're either all in or all out. So 
I can't just do anything half has uh, i mean if i'm not interested i'll half ass something yeah 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 just, just like told me you don't read your yeah, you fucking yeah. books and yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> i'll do that if i'm not interested i'll half ass everything uh but to me that, that means that I'll, i'm all out like I'll, I'll do it because i have to mm -hmm. uh but if you give me the choice of do it or don't do it and if i'm not interested i'm not gonna do it um but with the book reading it i you well let's get a little bit uh the book is Fictionist, again, there's that word. It's fiction. I, I'm actually not going to correct you because from now on, we're it's a word. We're fucking oh, fictionist. Yeah, yeah, it's fictionist. I love it. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, no. So it's fictionist, but I think it, to me, I kept thinking back about you. I was like, so it has to be a little bit true to you as well. Uh, you just mentioned like you, 12 years not really leaving the house, trying to write the book. Uh, it's about a person that has MS, uh, multiple sclerosis. sclerosis. Yeah. Um, are you also, you're also diagnosed as, yeah, yeah. So I guess so I can give you like a, like a quick rundown. So what happened okay. was, I'm glad you're telling me because I don't want to break. I just wanted to know if you're going to say uh, sclerosis. Yeah, um, I was going to say with this accent. <laughs> sclerosis. No. So, so in, uh, like 2011, my oldest is born and, um, I start to feel really sick and I have these moments where like I'm losing, you know, like cognitive function. I'm, uh, you know, just a lot of weakness, dizziness, uh, vision problems. And I go to doctors and they're like, oh, you just had a kid. It's anxiety. So I get put on, you know, different medications and so on and, and it doesn't help. And so the only thing I could do was I started to become a recluse because I thought regardless of what I'm doing, meditating, exercising, whatever, you know, because the doctors, I mean, it's crazy. As advanced as you think you are, you know, as a society, there's still some answers where you go in hoping to get it and you're not going to get it. And you, so you go, I feel like when doctors can't give you that response, it's like, are you exercising? Are you getting sun? Are you this? And so for, for a long time, it was that. And then finally, it was like 2018, I... Um, I, I had this bout, it was like three to five days, I don't remember, um, where I was just constantly like falling. And like, like not for real falling, but like the feeling of falling. Kind of like, is it, is it like when you go to sleep and you have that quick little dream that exactly you're falling? Exactly like that. But you're awake. But you're awake, you're asleep, whatever. Like you could be walking and then you're just, you know. And so I, I got a chance to see a doctor. They triggered an MRI. And finally, man, that was 2019. The doctor was like, hey, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's something wrong. Uh, 2020 came around, and the they put me with a neurologist. In San Antonio, there's only three neurologists. Um, and so they put me with a neurologist. It was like a year wait. I saw her at first, and she was like, hey, I'm, you know, fairly certain. Um, I, I diagnose you right now, but I, I can't without an MRI. Um she sent me for more MRIs and that's when they were like, dude, you got lesions in several different spots. And that's what it was. And so that whole period that I wasn't leaving, I started, so I, I got a degree in English, uh, like in 2008. So I, I, I always loved to write. And so I got the degree in English. I, I knew how to write, but I didn't know. I didn't know how to actually come out with something, right? Like it, like what I wanted was not like a journal thing. I wanted an actual output, right? And originally I thought everything I'm going to write, I have kids, right? Whether dad's leaving the house or not, I have kids. I want them to understand why dad's not leaving the house. And so, uh, fast forward, I, I wrote a ton of short stories and got diagnosed. Um, and then finally, I mean, like 20, I'm trying to think like 21, 22, I started to shop around the stories because I gave them to a friend uh, who, you know, believed in me and said, hey, I, I think this is something. And I started to shop around and I found this little amazing micro publisher, Halo. And they said, um, absolutely. And then in working with them, we realized like, hey, we have a novel. Um, and so, so it's interesting to you what you said. And the reason I bring that up is because you said, like, I don't like to skip around. The original intent of that book is you could have just opened it up and just, you know, the way that it was originally written was 
you I took the theme of the thing, titled that as a thing, and so the idea was like, hey, if you're pissed, read that one. If you're sad, read that one. If you miss your kids, read that one. And then it just it turned into something different. And uh, I had to make my peace with that because uh, I I went from one chapter to the next, and then there was a whole other story going on. Very important message in each chapter that I read. But my mind, like I said, has to go very um, chronological sometimes. Right on. And, and it didn't feel like that at first. And I was like, oh, my God. And it was it was making me angry. And then I realized, I don't think that's what it's meant for. Like, And you warned me. Like, it mm. was like, it, does, it just, it, it just, it's just several different stories. And yeah. so, but uh, I had to make my peace by chapter third, uh, chapter third, chapter three. I had to make my peace with that. And after that, I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. And I just started flowing. I still had to go chapter for chapter uh, till I get to the end. But I, yeah. I can see that. And I like that a lot. Thanks, man. And, and the final chapter was actually an editor's note that was like, hey, you got to close this up. And I said, I think I have something old written that I think would close it up. And then, No spoilers. No spoilers, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, so that, that, that's – but, yes, I have MS in, in, in real life. Uh, comparisons with the book. I have two daughters, Penelope and Adelaide, um, that I will tell you, uh, you know, read the book. Um, probably a little too young to read it, but they read the book. Um, and they were like, Dad, none of this, none of this happened. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of it. And what's really cool is my youngest has now started to write. And some of the stuff, I'm like, hey, did this really happen? And she's like, no. You know, now that she's finished elementary, I'll tell you that she wrote a few things for some sort of competition in her school, and I cried when she wrote it to me. She was like, "Hey, you taught you, you taught me to lie," mm. and I was all, "Not lie, <laughs> fictitious, fictionist." fictionist. fictionist. <laughs> I was all, "It's not a lie; it's fictionist." And she was like, "Yeah, but you know, you got it published by doing." It. And I was like, "Well, shit, okay." And uh, and so it's cool to see that you know they kind of picked up on it, but but no man, a, a ton of that is not most of it is not real there's things that inspired it mm -hmm. but by no means is there like um you know uh you know oh chapter x that truly no man there yeah. there's no chapter in there that that happened i've never been to colorado i don't know if you've gotten oh, to that chapter. yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I, never in my life you were ever. leaving colorado the last time i read mm. um i'll tell you a funny story the reason Colorado is so important there, and I've not told anybody this, the reason Colorado is so important there is because I saw a medium once, and the medium told me something. Um, gosh, I've never told anybody this. So I thought this is bullshit, but someone wanted me to do it. I did it, and in my head I was like, hey, if this is true, I want them to talk about uh, flowers, roses. I get the medium on. We start talking, and she's like, hey, well, this is, you know, Kind of like what you did. We're like, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to a very guided conversation. And then next thing you know, um, she's like, hey, I got to stop. She's like, there's this lady that will not stop handing me flowers, roses. And I was like, no shit. And I had written down the flower thing. I never told anybody that. And in there, she said, hey, um, I don't know if you believe in past lives. And I, 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 I'm not a, I, I don't know what I believe. But she said, I don't know if you believe in past lives. She was like, but you were a chaplain in the civil war i'm not saying that that's true or not she said and all you wanted in this life when you came back was to go to colorado and be a hermit and i don't know that that was true obviously that didn't happen i you know but for some reason i wrote colorado as kind of this thing that i never got this thing that i was told was really important but I never did. Yeah. Not to say I won't end up there yeah. all the time, you know? That's crazy if you do, dude. As a hermit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be crazy. Or if anything, like, have you ever been to Colorado at all? Never. Never wow. even in a connecting flight have I wow. crossed through Colorado. Yeah. Okay. It would be really interesting and crazy if you actually did. For some reason, whether you end up or vacation there. Yeah. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, well, we're going to talk more about your book, but since you mentioned, like, the medium uh, and, and the believing of that i've never been a believer of that like i've always been very questioned i'm one of those mm -hmm. question everything believe nobody kind of thing uh, um and i went to new orleans this was actually it was right after katrina uh some friends and i were part of a group that 
we went to go help. Like it was just a bunch of like college kids that wanted to go drink at Bourbon Street. Can't imagine a better place, <laughs> right? Um, so they was like fully paid. All you gotta do is be at the site at seven in the morning. Whatever you do, don't care. Uh, we'll give you a place to stay. We'll give you food if you want breakfast and lunch uh, and dinner. But if you don't want to eat that, you can eat something else. So just fully paid just because we were committed that we were going to be there. To do, and we did. No matter how much we went out the night before, we were there. Mm-hmm. Because it, and it meant a lot. Like It was like seeing somebody's whole livelihood or you know lives and memories just destroyed by this hurricane. So... It was a very somber, sober feeling when we're there, even though we're just college kids partying the night before. Like, we took that serious. Um, but anyways, we were out one night on on the French Quarter. My friend was, like, one, was, like, very hardcore. The only thing I want to do here in New Orleans, besides everything else, was get my palm red. So he goes and gets his palm red. Um, he is gay. Uh and at the time, I was very ignorant to, to stuff. Um, so when this lady's, like, reading his poem, she's like, oh, you're going to have, like, so many kids and all that. And my mind's still, like, not capturing, like, oh, you know, other, you know, people that are gay can still have kids, ignorant college kids. So I was like, oh, man, this is fake. This is not, not real. Everything you're saying is lying. And that wasn't just because of the kid thing. It was just everything else. But I was just making fun of it, mm-hmm. um, uh, of of the idea of her her telling his future by the lines in her hands. And this is the first time my friend, this particular friend, has ever really been upset with me for something I said. Um, And he's just like, dude, you're being stupid. Like This was stupid. It was good for me. I enjoyed it. And who knows what really is going to happen in my future. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, And then the lady looks at me and she goes, come here. And she uh, she goes, uh, can I see your hand? I'm not charging, whatever. So like I reached out my hand like that, and or like this. Instead of her reading my palm or anything, she grabs it, turns my wrist like this, and I, or to this way to where I'm wearing my watch. And she goes, that's a really nice watch. I would hate something to happen to it. Or Ooh. it would be ashamed if something happened to it. I was like, all right, whatever. Like I took my hand back, whatever. Okay, don't steal it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, it was like, well, somebody's going to try to steal it now. Um, like one of our friends, like, you know, watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so nothing came from it. We went, had perfect night. We were walking to our last, like, hangout spot, which was supposed to be where they sell their hand grenades. We're crossing the street. <laughs> wait, Not- wait, what? They sell hand grenades? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the other- <laughs> it's a big old, it's a drink. It's like oh, the. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> fucking what? It's, it's New Orleans, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna catch some gators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They sell the drink, the the hang. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they have the. Uh, we're going there to finish off the night. We're crossing the street. It's crowded, but not too bad. Um, nobody bumps into me. Nothing. But I reach out to my friend that was getting his palm, like to tell him something. And as I'm reaching out, my watch just from the clasp, brand new watch, on clasp, falls on the ground, uh, right on the, uh, like face down onto the street. And I'm like, okay. And I pick it up, just completely crack the face. Shattered. And I'm like, wow. And I, the first, I instantly was like, I was just angry. Like, whoa. Like, it was just, what the heck? And my friend looked at me and goes, bro, the lady said it. The lady. This is why you don't talk mess and you don't play around. And then I was like, "Wow, what if, what if it was? Yeah, would have yeah, been yeah. coincidence." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. That story would have. Uh, when, when you're telling it, I was like, "Dude, what if when she reached, she just gave you a titty twist?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, like she's just like, "Get out of here, dude." That no, that that's that's crazy. And there is something about New York. I was just over there last, not this past Easter, but last Easter for the first time ever in my life. And uh, and there is something. There's there's just something there, man. That I I I, I absolutely love. I, uh, I, uh, I I I just I don't know. That it was the people, and I I grew up. I know you're gonna ask in a minute, but I I grew up in Mexico City for a little while, and I feel like every cousin has a ghost story. 
Mm. And I feel like, um, like New Orleans was like that. Like there's still this like true belief in like magic yeah. or the or dark magic, the, the dark, dark art, something like that, man. And I, and I, I, I don't know. I loved it. And then, you know, like I said, just people, I, you know, just, it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. But that, that would have scared me, man. I would have gone to the hotel room and been like, fuck it. I, yeah. Yeah. I, no, it didn't scare me, but it did teach me a lesson. I was like, look, whatever people believe or don't believe in, whether it's real or not real, if it's just one big coincidence, like I was an asshole. Like I shouldn't have done that, and whether she did it or just had just happened, like it taught me it's like, dude, you just gotta be better. Yeah, yeah. So I will say this. So, but if she did it, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. owe me a watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and with inflation, <laughs> that mas cabrón. Oh watch. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a it was a fossil watch, but now you can buy me like a Rolex. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, something. Um, the it's weird that you brought that up. So. I don't have like a specific belief and I know that I touch on that here and there in the book. And I think I don't I don't know what it is in me but I feel like even the beliefs that I've loved. So if, as an example, I go to a Buddha center. I will absolutely not go a ton of times consecutively because I have this fear of like falling for something if i get too comfortable falling as in believing into something yeah and what if it's not right mm. and so like i have this like cop out where it's like hey man i'm gonna stay back here i'll go visit you guys i'll go you know check out these different beliefs and but i i, I struggle with that because i feel like as a you know we just we tend to uh we follow very easily which is not a bad thing man there's a lot of comfort yeah. in that there's a lot of really beautiful things and even those communities that do that um but just for myself like i i feel like i've i don't know man i i just you know even the things that i love i try to watch it from outside and not really like yeah which isn't yeah. a bad thing like it's always good to be careful in what we do fall for um especially yeah. you know the people and people have very variants of what they fall f or, or, or how people can fall like some are very gullible some are just like very trusting i used to be very trusting um and, and it's just some people that just don't like they question everything and i i feel like i'm right in the middle of it and it's helped me out a lot to yeah. to be an outsider view kind of thing yeah 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 Damn. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I know you. I know you did that as a joke, but no, dude, that's crazy. I did that, not do that as a joke. No, 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 no. But I think that's something. So she's coming back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's the thing, man. Is like I'm such a believer. And it's a fossil. Just saying. It's a smart watch, but it's a fossil. So she's coming. Back. I I don't know, man. Like, and that's the thing, man. Is I I, you know. I strongly so my kids watch these guys. I don't know if you've ever seen them on YouTube, uh, Sam and Kobe, and they oh yeah yeah like teenagers yeah. that ghost hunt ghost hunt yeah. yeah and and man like I think even they're more skeptical skeptical than I am, um, and so I like I don't know like, and that's what I'm saying that's what's what I think is so hypocritical of me is like I'm so quick to believe yet when I go do this stuff I'm like well you know I'll be here for a couple hours but then I. You know, I jet yeah. after that. It's weird. The stuff also. I mean, I can. I. I feel you on the uh, like. I'm. I'm skeptical on stuff that I believe. Like, I don't truly believe that in, in ghosts, but also don't do not not believe. I'll tell you a funny story. I was um, two funny stories. One time I was right here, and uh, I was eating a sandwich, and I kept seeing this shadow to 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 the right of me. And I would turn and and nothing, man. And so I was just I was standing up like between calls or whatever. And then I would turn around. And I'd see it like I'd see it, something moving. And I was like, damn. And so you know, I finally was like, hey, whoever's here, you know, just please don't scare me. Like you know, just be nice. Be nice. Just whatever. So anyways, I uh, finish eating. I go to the bathroom. And I'm like washing my hands and uh, and kind of like cleaning my teeth while I'm like washing my hands, 
and I see it again, and I turn, and I'm like, wait a minute, and then the mirror helped me out. Dude, my beard was all like that. So all I was seeing oh. was my little pelitos moving <laughs> like that as I was chewing. Dude. Yeah, and then another funny story is I was outside, and uh, I heard a whistle. And uh, it was super late at night, and I was like, oh, my God, like, what neighbors out here? We had just moved here, um, back, uh, second wife. And uh, I was like, dude, she wasn't here. Um, and I was like, what is that? What is it? And then in my head, I was like, my grandma showed me to whistle. She's communicating with me. So I was like, Whoosh. And then, you know, a few minutes later, I hear a whistle again. I was like, oh, fuck. Her name was Amelia. And I was like, I miss you. Whoosh. And then fucking second wife texts. But then, what are you doing? I'm trying to get your attention because we have cameras outside. <laughs> And it was her whistling through the fucking camera, dude. And I was having this moment with Amelia. Oh, that's hilarious. Dude, yeah. I have cameras in my house, too. Like, And I'll mess with either my son or my wife when they're doing something. Hey. Hey. <laughs> like that meme that's yeah. going on right now? Shh, shh, yeah. Shh. But now, now they're like, they've gotten, they've gotten smart to it. So now they're like, all right, they can see. Like, uh, but yeah, like there's like certain things. Like in my house right now, my wife likes to joke around that there's... A ghost named Harold. Mm -hmm. and Well, she named it. But every now and then, it's like I see different shadows or I'll hear voices. Like sometimes, And sometimes it's very distinct voices either to her or uh, to my mother-in-law or even my son, I think I've heard. And they'll, they won't even be in the house. Wait, but you're saying you hear their voices or they hear voices? No, I hear their, their voices. voices. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe the ghost can be like a, a really good... like. Like a mocking, uh, yeah, or is a mockingbirds or whatever. Yeah, mocking Jay. If you hear the Hunger Games, if you've read the Hunger know. Games, I've read the Hunger Games. Ah, damn. See, that's what I'm saying. That's a, that's your level. That your book is at that level. Yeah. I've read the Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, so you know. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank no, you. No, no, I'm being for real. Um, but yeah, like I hear their voice and they're not there, and I, I, it's it's a mind thing. Most of the time, I think that's that's what it is. Um. But sometimes I see some stuff and it's it's Harold, but it's never been anything bad. It also in my in my and I've said this before on my and on the podcast is in my house where I grew up, uh, my mom thinks that the ghost of my grandfather is there. Um because my grandfather was very much like saving energy. And so whenever we leave a light on for too long or we ignore it, or if we forget about it, the light goes off, turns off. Uh radio, anything, it just shuts off when it's been it's being wasted yeah, yeah and that's what it, his thing was like don't waste energy you don't need to do that and so just things so, so i that's what my mom thinks i kind of believe with certain things that i've seen like stuff like that seen lights turn off or, or just whatever like that but yet i'm still in the sense of like i don't want to see a ghost but seeing is believing kind of thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. No, I so in my life I've I've felt things at you know, in Mexico like you know push and stuff like that, but I've never you know actually seen anything. But for whatever reason, there's just like that intrinsic thing of like, and I don't know if it's like that Mexican side of me that's just like oh yeah something you know something's there, right? But oh, um, you have a different side of you. No, I guess <laughs> not. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I mean, some people think I might be a Pacific Islander. You? Yeah, that I look like a little Pacific Islander. When I saw you walk up, I was a pinche Maui. Oh, yeah? yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. I take that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. You know, me and the rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's a real thing. And I actually took 23 of me I did saying, too. I'm gonna, it's going to come back Pacific Islander. Did it? No. Came back 80% Northern Mexican. <laughs> and then the other ones like just ever there was some kind of island or something but like it pretty much just told me you're like 100 like you're pretty much fucking you're mexican yeah yeah yeah. You know, Prince. which is fine i'm proud but there was a little bit of hope i don't know what it like it was just like not hope like i'm fucking desperate to be something yeah like, i was like dude you're, you're doing good no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. but it was like because literally from elementary to now to this very day i will be when I tell them, it's like, no, I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico. I'm hardcore Mexican. Uh, what part of Mexico? But now I'm in the U.S., so you can't send me back, and I live here, and I'm proud. I'm send his saying, ass back. Eee, gotcha. It'll leave the cameras real nice. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, there was like, I've always been confused for Pacific Islander. Very specific. I've never even would have thought of, thought of that. Uh, but that, that's what people have That's what they think? No, man. I, so I did, I think it was, I know they've changed the name, but it was like Ancestry. And I have like. The Maybe ma- that's what I did. The majority was I like did. Mexico. And then there was like Northern Africa, like maybe like we had a cousin that spent a weekend in italy and that's what the whole family holds on to is that one cousin (laughs) he had a wine over there yeah 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 and so uh and and where man yeah it was it it was a mess um i feel like my family based on that map they were a little bitojones man and they just (laughs) they like to have fun when they which one's the one where like that cousin you don't talk to no more finds you which one's, is that 23 me or is that Ancestry? Oh, dude. Um, I think because my family knows I'm broke, nobody <laughs> from <laughs> Ancestry enough. reaches out. Yeah, just... I, I remember I was very hesitant of doing it in the first place because uh, I told my wife, you know, I don't believe in a lot of things, but I believe that this is a ploy from the government to try to clone me one day. Mm. And it's like, so I don't want to do it. She goes, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to ask my son, your son to do it. It's like, well, that makes no sense. Yeah. I was like, if I don't want me to be cloned, I don't want him to be cloned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, and then it's like, yeah, but it's going to tell us a little bit about you. I was like, oh, fine, what, I'll do it. What do you think they would do with your clone? Nothing. Uh, I don't know. Probably use me as a test dummy for oh, something. Okay. Maybe a podcaster. What would piss you off the most if they did a clone, but they changed one thing? <sighs> if they gave me abs. I was like, what? <laughs> why that one? Yeah, I was, then I'll be jealous of them. Pinche vato. Full hair. That, that pissed me off. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I can okay, fair enough. Porque yeah, I, I'm not doing well up there. <laughs> hey, well, it's not somebody because you can grow you can grow a beard. So my thing is has always been, I can't grow a real beard. This is as good as it gets, but I have I still have my hair. I saw uh, that. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people in my family, uh, not the guys, <laughs> not the girls. It's either uh, they can grow a badass beard, but they're bald. Wait, the girls can? No, 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 the guys. Oh. It's all, all the guys. They can either grow a badass beard, imagine. Uh, they can grow a badass beard, but they're bald. Or they have their hair, but they can't grow a beard, which is mm. why I got that. Yeah, I feel like I'm okay. Like I don't know what to do with my hair. I just left it alone. But um, why did we get in this conversation? Oh, I don't do you, know. I yeah. forgot I wrote a book and shit. <laughs> I, a book. I know. We were talking. <laughs> We're supposed to be talking about your book, no, not no, about no. me. No, but 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 I think you know, like I think the ancestry thing was cool. I actually, while I was writing the book, uh, it was towards the beginning of that is when my sister gifted me the ancestry thing, and um, and I remember thinking, like, man, what have these people been through? You know, when I saw the little map of how they ventured out. I was like, what have they been through? And I can't even make it to the fucking, you know, gas station or grocery store and stuff like that. And so, um, I, I don't know, man. I, I think that there is there is this appeal of, like, what has, what has made me gone through, right? And how much of that... Dude, I'm not a science person. Yeah. Oh, I'm not this a is fucking the math person. I'm not a conspiracy person. I, dude, yeah. I'm just, you know... Well, look, listen, whatever you say here, say it in confidence because this is too hard, too fast, and we don't check facts. Oh. Yeah. Somebody else, say, you know, on the internet will, but we don't. Oh, but that'd be, that'd be. We're here. We can throw facts. You know, Abraham Lincoln was the 21st president. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a fact. Is it real or not real? We don't know. We're not going to check it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I, I just. Uh... It wasn't, by the way. I'm not stupid. Come on. Fictitious and eighteen so, fictitious. It, uh, I was fictitious. Oh, what was the word? Fictitious. I like fictitious. How, I like how you made it more sexual the, <laughs> as the conversations. <laughs> are. Fish. The a. Hey, the longer this goes, the sexier yeah, yeah, yeah. it gets. Um, <laughs> shit, I forgot what I was gonna say. But, 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 yeah, man. I think I think that there's something interesting in, you know, I think. It's weird because I think both conversations are, are part of the same thing, right? When you look at ghosts, you're like. What can impact me, but is that where I can end up? Mm. When you look at ancestry, you're like, well, where did I come from? Right? So it's like both an answer to the same thing of like, what pointed me here? And I think that that's the beauty of, you know, a lot of spirituality and things like that. But I, like I said, man, I just, um, 
I, I haven't found something that I like really resonate with. And so, you know, right now I'll terrify the ghost after you leave and I hear something, but Oh, now um, that we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure, dude. I, I, I guarantee freaking to you. We opened the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. a window. Um, but just if you're here, do not scare me. Be yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's go a little bit back to, to you. Okay. And okay. to the book. Um, I, I think the best question right now, because I know I have it. What is it like living with MS? And then I, I know in the book, or no, not in the book. When I went to like define MS, uh, multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah. Sclerosis. They gave they gave two different like types, and one can be progressive, one can be remissive, uh, or it doesn't really show too many symptoms. So what it is is so there's secondary progressive where so think of it as secondary progressive is you're just you're on the way down. There's no saving you. Mm you're just you know you're 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 deteriorating very quickly primary progressive is that but i think it's at a sh i forget the two but primary progressive is i think you're still deteriorating but not as quickly as you would if you had secondary like there's moments of like a pause kind of thing right? not no? really okay you lose ability as you go but it's the speed at which you lose ability okay. that differentiates it mine is what you're describing which is i will so i i had moments a few months ago where i was you know using a cane or you know sometimes i couldn't you know walk very well or like you know shit was just there were symptoms that just like bombarded you but what mine is is you decline and then you go back up now like imagine i was at 95 percent, i went down and maybe now i'm at 92 percent, right now the really messed up part is that you can jump between mine to the primary or secondary. Um, typically, if you're in those two, to my knowledge, and I could be totally wrong, you don't jump to relapsing, remitting, re relapse remitting MS, mm -hmm. RRMS, and which is what I have. And so, um, but yeah, yeah. So that that that's in a nutshell what. How other. do you go from having to use a cane to not having to, like, is there something you have to do or is it the medicine or is it just the nature of the thing? It's the nature of it, man. It just could be, and it's so crazy because, you know, this is where I struggle a lot with doctors. And first off, I mean, dude, you're popular, so there's a really good chance my doctor's going <laughs> to know about this. I wish I was more popular. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but... You know, I, I feel like my doctor is, a, I, I, I love that doctor. There's, you don't know. And I think that is the scariest part of MS is you have no idea. And the original title of the book was The Long Goodbye. Because I always felt that that unknown factor of MS created this like i always described it as this plastic and you see it now after covid you know how they put these plastic barriers mm. between you and like counters and stuff like that yeah they get dirty they get scratched up and i always envision that to where that's what ms was for me was this between me and life it was this board that got placed between us and there were some things that were going to be able to be wiped off and there were some things that were just like I will never see that side of the, you know, the opposite end of it the same way. And I think that um, it just, yeah, that was the original title because I felt like I had to say goodbye. You know, my kids back then were super active, super outside, all over the place. And I felt like I had to say goodbye to being able to do all these things to them. And, um, and yeah, and, and, you know, I've lucked out and I've, I've had my moments and whatnot, but... Um, I feel like I've also lucked out, man, and I have an, an amazing, amazing support system, um, which I'll touch on in, in, in a little bit. But, um, but yeah, to me, that's, that's MS, is this, this, uh, this battle with the unknown. And this battle, you know, we, we, we've been fucking around about the whole Mexican thing. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I, I really struggled with is, you know, my family is 100 fucking percent Mexican. We lived in Mexico 
there is one ant that lives in Chicago, and uh, we we're estranged a little bit. You know, we, hello, hello on Facebook kind of thing. Very sweet ant. I I love her, um, but I feel like also there there is this Mexican thing of not really understanding it. I have a super sweet uncle. When I when I told him about the MS, he brought me calcium pills because he thought it was about my bones. Mm. And I was like, hey, dude, he cared enough to bring it, yeah. and I still took the fucking calcium pills for the sixty days. That they were in there. <laughs> but um, but it there there is this this thing of like not knowing culturally, you know, for them not knowing exactly what what I've been diagnosed with because they're open about it. We don't know what the fuck it is. Whereas here, to what I was saying earlier. I have doctors that are trying really hard to keep everything in check. At the end of the day, they don't really know either. Right. Right? And so it, it comes up to this weird glass is getting dirtier. You know? Who knows, man? You know? Uh, yeah. That's, it, that is is crazy. And um, the it almost feels like the guessing game. Like what's going to work, what's not going to work. Um and the fact that they they don't know what's gonna happen and what's gonna work, um, dang, what was I gonna say? Well, it's it. it well, do, do, I mean, that's it. You don't know. You you have no idea, and you can bombard your system with all these drugs. You know, I essentially what I feel like they're doing right now is I get chemo. Okay. Oh. Like it's like uh, like baby what they call baby chemo. And it's because my immune system is what's attacking me. Mm -hmm. So what do they do is they kill my immune system. Okay. And so, um, I mean, dude, I, I think you said it best. And, th and that's the hard part, right? Like, we, you know, and I, I, I've sat with family. We've gone to counsel or with, well, with why I've been married a few times. But with wives been, you know, you go to counseling. And that's the hardest thing to explain is like, dude, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, y you get this now. And I don't know what happens later. And that what I was gonna ask is like, how are you with like with trusting medicine? Like I know, for me, even with allergies, I'm like I'm gonna take the allergy medicine. Like I'll let my body fight mm. the thing that's wrong with me. And even that, like even so, like I don't know. This is the best thing to say, but throughout COVID, I don't know if I had COVID mm -hmm. because I never tested myself. Mm -hmm. I never. Uh, I just was like, my body's going to kill it or it's going to kill me. Yeah, yeah, nah. yeah. But uh, I felt like, I, I know I got sick and I was like, oh, this could be it. But you know what? I just, it's going to fight it. And, you know, here I am. But I heard that story about you. I love that. Um, did I? Did I? Have you, I shared that? You shared that, yeah, between you and Joe. And I think he had okay. the story also where it was like, he kind of said his goodbyes at night. And it was oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. shit. And then I woke up, right? Like his grandma was like, you're not ready i love that when that you brought that out of him is that his grandma was like now get the cover not today not yeah, today not the chinga no but yeah like i, I never got tested because i was like i'm not gonna put myself in the system um but I, I i it wasn't because me trying to be like this ain't real this is not it was just like i need to I've always been, no matter, even if it's just, if it's a little sneeze or a little cough and he's like, oh, take some cough medicine, it's going to always like, no, let my body fight it because so, it's only going to get stronger. Mm. Uh, so when I do go to doctors, I have the uh, skepticism of like, they're just trying to sell me a pill. They're trying to, 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 to fill their pockets. So that's how I feel. And I could be wrong. Don't come for me, big pharma. Uh, but that's just, that's just how I was brought up. And thinking, my body's gonna fight it. In your situation, your body is, if, if, whether it's trying to fight it, it's just failing. And, and I don't want to sound sound harsh on that. Um, but how do you feel on the medicines they give you? Like, are you very trusting with the medicines, tr or with the treatments, uh, or do you question them? So to answer your question, I think. You know, one of, one of the things that I love about the MS community is that it's both. And when I, I so I used to run the, with a, with a partner, um, we ran the local in-person support group. And what I loved is it was all-encompassing. You had people that were like, hey, 
I'm going to figure this out by changing my diet. I'm going to figure this out by supplements. I'm going to figure this out. And then you had me, right? Who's just like, dude, give me any medicine under the sun um, and, and I'll do it. Now, now, mind you, during the height of my anxiety, when I didn't know what was going on, um, I, I was very skeptical of medicine. Headache, no Tylenol. You know, I, I was like, I, and not, not because I had a message of like, oh, my body will figure it out. I was just scared to take this because I didn't know what it would do to already all the crazy things that were kind of going on in, in my body. And so I was afraid of it. And then I got... You know, even though they misdiagnose you for so long, I am a huge proponent of, you know, anti-depression, anti-anxiety medicines, you know, all that stuff. Um, if you don't want to take it, don't take it. If you want to take it, maybe there's benefit. For me, there was benefit. And I think one of the things that I found was it allowed me um, to experiment with those, what are they, they don't call them medicines, they call them DMTs, which are disease modifying therapies. Because... I think they purposely do that, which is kind of weird the way that you set the question up is I think they do it because they think medicine's going to fix you, whereas this is just like a prayer of like, hey, there's statistics that show this is beneficial, um, but maybe it's not, right? There's no, there's, no, uh, there's no set thing, right? Like it's not like an antibiotic where you're just like, hey, I have strep. I'm going to take whatever, you know, your doctor gives you and then the strip is gone. No, man, it's, it could be one thing. It could be another, you yeah. know, it could make you better. It could make you worse. Side effects are rough, um, at best. And so, um, yeah, but, but me personally, man, and no knock on either of them, me personally, if they're like, Hey, try this dude, I'm in whatever. Um, yeah, I'm in. And, and some whatever of this might help. Yeah. Whatever might help. You know, they gave me a medicine, uh, that made me hallucinate and it because I dude one of the worst things ever with MS is the nerve pain you just get this like burning weird pain all over your body and they gave me I, I can't remember the name of it they gave me this thing and I remember I went to the restroom at like two in the morning and I'm in the restroom and I'm washing my hands and I turn around and there's like sixth grade little fat Marco huge backpack huge great backpack I remember that and he's just standing behind me and he just goes like this. And I was like, fuck, I need to go to bed. And I called the doctor the next morning. I was like, hey, I saw a little sixth grade Marco. <laughs> and she was like, no, we need to take you off that, that nerve medicine because oh. I, yeah. But, but again, man, like some of, some of the times um, you're so tired, you're so spent that you're just, I'll take it because I just want sleep. I just want a few minutes of, of relaxation because it, it's not, you know, your body's not going to yeah. give it to you. And I guess now that you, you, you told me that, like, I feel like my question was an unfair question and kind of dumb. Cause, uh, no, 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 no. It, it's also, curiosity. Yeah, well, and I don't think that's a bad thing. No, it is. I was curious about that, but what I'm thinking, like, I'm, I'm, I'm comparing it to having allergies. Like, that's fucking ridiculous. Like, it's not that like allergies. You cry a little bit. You sneeze. You have mocos. Yeah, but you're pretty much trying to see what's gonna prolong your life at 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 the extreme of it. But also like how not to have to be in a cane or be able to enjoy your time with your kids. You know. Yeah. So definitely, and you phrased it perfectly. Whatever or whoever said it, maybe it was me. But uh, oh, what, whatever's what, gonna, over here, yeah, go over here. <laughs> no, whatever's gonna, whatever's gonna help, whatever's gonna help, and that makes sense, you know. And I think in that situation, no matter how much I think my body's gonna fight it, no, like if I'm that in that sense, and I'm gonna be here for my son, whatever helps, and I'll try whatever. Yeah, because the alternative is, you know, not the best. Mocos everywhere. Right? <laughs> but but I, I don't know, man. And this is where I feel like. One of the things that I love, you know, in a lot of your conversations that you've had with people, it didn't hit me until I, you know, until we hit record and when we started doing, you always talk about community. And I was always like, what's my community? And I realize now as we've been talking, you know, one of the things that I love about the MS community is there is zero judgment. You have the people that are like, hey, man. 
I didn't take the COVID shot because of X, Y, Z. And you have the people that are like, oh, I, I know someone who has taken a COVID shot probably like every three months. And the, the beauty of that community is because you have Wait, this. I didn't say I didn't take the COVID shot. Oh, no, no, no. I also didn't say I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't want, <laughs> nobody knows. But I, the, the beauty. <laughs> I said FERPA earlier. I think it's HIPAA. Well, like, I thought you were anyways, talking. No, I'm just, no, no, I just, I was just thinking about, sorry, my bad. I thought FUPA. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but one of the beauties of this thing is, is that I think because we all, and I say this, if anyone from the MS community is listening, I say this with all the love in the world. I think the MS community, we have hope, but we know we're also quasi fucked that we just look at each other and we're like, dude, whatever is working for you right now, fuck it. My ideologies are not going to change how I feel about you because you figured it out differently. Yeah. And so I think that's that that's a really cool thing about it is um is kind of having that like unconditional like, yeah, man, like sure. You know, oh someone's doing an experiment on this thing and you'll have, you know, a handful of people that are like, yeah, I'll try it out. A handful of people that are like, no, I'm not into it. And no one bats an eye. You talked about support groups. Um, uh, some of it has to be, you said, Facebook support groups or. Uh, I so I ran an in-person group that okay. met once a month for a little while, and then I got out of it. Yeah. Um, how do you or how do you choose who's in your support? Not for anybody else, and like, how do you ch- personally choose? your support group and what's going to help because you know whether they're family friends strangers the support can come differently <clears throat> um some of it is not going to be very helpful whether they mean to be to do the best uh or not it just it just happens yeah yeah, yeah. How, how do you go to choose your support support group so just because of the fact that i brought up the group i want to be explicit when i say this for the ms support group anybody's welcome and we all you know for the folks who have led it we all take an oath anybody can show up right now i will say this for me as an individual for support group i only succeed when i have individuals that can show unconditional love in the way that i need it which is sometimes man I just want you to sit with me. I'm a huge proponent of laugh. And sometimes it's just a matter of like, hey man, sit with me. And it's a dick joke that, (laughs) you know, that just pulls me out of it. I don't do well with individuals who show up and say, well, you should do this. Did you do this? If I have a cold, then I can understand that. But that's not what I have. Right. Um, My kids... I, I've had this conversation again, man, pointing to your old podcast. I've, I've had this conversation with my kids. They've turned into little nurses with me. And man, it's, it's a beautiful thing when they know I'm sick. My youngest man, if the medicine's knocking me out and I'm snoring, she'll lightly wake me up and she'll be like, Hey, um, I don't want your throat to hurt tomorrow. Move. See if you can, you know, not snore. I wake up there's snacks on the bed. Um, and, and to reciprocate my love to them as I've told them, Hey guys, when you're older, if I don't, if I can't do what you've done for me, it is okay to cut me off because I realize whether it's family, friends or whatever, if, if, if you can't sit with each other through those shit moments and be there for each other, then I don't. I struggle with what we're there for each other uh, for, right? And so, you know, I, I love people. And I think that one of the things that I love to do is I get I get such joy out of making people laugh. But I think that because of that, I've become the person's band-aid. And so when then in return, I'm the one feeling sick and they, you know, it's not there, yeah. then then that's it. And And I think that healthy boundaries um have helped me a lot to being like hey 
And man, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I've struggled with parents. I've I've struggled with family, and I think it's one of those things where it's just kind of like, hey, this is where I need you, and I'm not going to be mad if you can't be this. But I'm not going to probably be be very present for you no. if you can't. And so, um, so yeah, yeah, man. And I, and I, I, you know, I, you know, I think that the 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 friends and family that I've developed into this very close kind of quarters with me have been the ones that I didn't expect at all. You know, my my first wife, um, that marriage ended badly, and now she is my best friend. Her guy is my best friend, you know, and um, and I think that, um, you know, I know I know we'll talk about it in a little bit, but I think that where you maybe you know if if what your question was because I feel like a lot of times these are like kind of lesson moments. Sometimes the people who are going to really show up for you are the ones that you didn't really think yeah, were the ones that show up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they do, and you're just like, fuck, thank you. Yeah. You know, and so, um, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, that's how my circle came up. No, that me. makes sense. And it's, it's, like, it's like keeping a balance, a balance of, and you said it perfectly. You know, sometimes you're going to be the hype for somebody mm-hmm. when they're feeling low. But if you have a person that's always constantly low, which at the same time, fully valid, if they're of course. If that's what they're feeling, because only they know what they're living. Uh, but if you need something as a pick me up and they can't be that for you and reciprocate that, then I get it. Like, yeah, even in like <laughs> normal within normal limits. <laughs> yeah. even in, in, um, when I'm having a bad day. I need that person to be like either my wife or my son or a friend or whatever to just say, have a good time with and just like make me laugh. Because I also too like, I want to laugh. I want to hang out. Who doesn't, uh, right? man? Yeah, right. like, like uh, I don't know, man. It's, life is goes so scary. You could say we could talk about it, right? But sometimes that laughter, dude, just. Yeah. It's crazy. And I'm, I'm fine being the dummy for and, and, you know, the butt of jokes for somebody. But when I need you to be that for me. That's when I and you can be. And that's when I know this is real. This is a real friend. This is, you know, something a relationship or a circle that I can be around. So yeah. that makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, man. And um, yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. Tell me a dick joke. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, dude, I, the, the funny thing. So you said you got to chapter seven. I got to chapter seven, the, which is the funeral, right? I haven't read it. But okay. Oh, it's so you're on six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'm on seven. Don't take it back. No, don't, don't don't take I'm that away. I'm on seven. Just haven't read it. <laughs> I've made. I've got to that checkpoint. You know what? My favorite thing about life is, you know, if you subtract the beauty that is family and children and things like that, is making strangers laugh. And I think that I've done that a lot of times with dick jokes. And it's just one of those things where I think I do it because my great grandmother, um, that's what she did. She got married when she was like 15. Mm -hmm. I think my great grandfather was probably in his 30s or 40s, um, Mexico, different times. And uh, and she just she was the raunchiest little old lady. (laughs) And so I think this I, I think that like. There's like comfort in it because as a child, I used to see her. I mean, we'd go out to the little market to buy eggs and milk and stuff like that. Um, we went once, and you know, I'm from the States, so it was different times, right? I know now it's very different, not a bad thing. But I remember I, she was like, hey, come with me to the market. We're going to go get milk and eggs. We go, and uh, someone pulled out a gun at the little market, the little. Mm-hmm. Uh, stopped that she was at and dude I turned around and ran and I was all gone gone and I ran away and I ran all the way outside the market and I turned around and I'm like where the fuck is where the fuck is she she comes out she bought she stayed <laughs> through it hell yeah pendejo 
me dejaste, <laughs> which means you left me. We just had to get the, you know, the the groceries and and I don't know, man, that that like jo that joke of life, right? Like you literally had a gun pulled on you, but you still waited for the eggs and the milk. Is dude, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know. And I just, it's just, you know, sometimes grandmas are are badasses. <laughs> dude, she was. The rumor is, is that my great grandfather's first family, who he left, uh, loved her so much, even though she broke up the family, that they would invite her over. To tell jokes, okay. and she would drive six, seven hours for a weekend. They'd wait for her, and she would tell the divorced families <laughs> a bunch of jokes. Into it. Also, I wonder how many times we can say the D word on the internet. This is the first time I've said it multiple times. A week. Oh, really? Yeah, I wonder. Who knows? But we said it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. I think we kind of. I feel like there's a lot to talk about mm -hmm. with MS. And there's a lot to talk about with you. Like, I think you as a person, I've enjoyed this a lot. Dude, this has been awesome. This has been a therapy session where the therapist isn't going to write the joke down and be like, fuck, we'll, we're going to focus on this because yeah. this is, you know, this has been fantastic, dude. I can't wait to hang out with you again. Even no cameras. Well, uh, you invite me, I'm down. Um, but what I also want to say is that, like, I feel like this definitely deserves, like, and I say this a lot for, for my guests, because I truly mean it. I would love to have you back on, but I feel like this deserves more information. Mm -hmm. Um, not just for people that don't have MS, but, and may not be in the world of it, but for people that do, especially, you know? Um, because this was a, an eye opening thing for me too. Like, I've heard about it. I've, um, back in the, uh, what was it, in the 2000s, Clay Walker? That was the first time I started looking into MS because I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I followed him a lot. He's a country singer, I think out of Texas, right. if I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And he came out to have MS, and I know it became, it, he put it in the forefront of things, mm -hmm. um, just because of his presence. Um, at least for me, maybe because I was in that community. Um, but definitely very informational, and I think it can only get more informational and, 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 and also fun yeah. as you as a person. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation off cameras uh, that we had. Uh, so, yeah, I truly want to have you back on, and I feel like you deserve to be back on. I appreciate that. Anytime you say... We're, um, we're doing it. We're going for pizza, man. We're going to get you that fucking <laughs> reader's book pizza or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll earn my AR points. <laughs> uh, but um, one thing I do want to know about you is what do you, you know, to end on a good note and also for your Too Hard Too Fast story. Uh, before we get to that, how can people follow you? Where can people get the book within normal limits? So he here's the thing, uh, and my publisher is going to fucking hate me for this. Uh -oh. You can get the book on Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble. I have a few at some of the local bookstores. I have some with the library system. Um, or or um, you can message me. Um, the, the one that I'm really active on is uh, Instagram, WNLMarco. Um, you can ping me and I will get you a free copy. Um, I, I, I don't, um, I, I, I'm so grateful that you're willing to, to just, like I said, hang out with the kid who wrote it. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I'm happy to get you a free copy. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, hopefully within the year I have it on, uh, different, um, audio book, um, spaces, but yeah, just reach out to me and I'll, I'll shit. I'll get you a free copy. I, uh, you know, I, I, if you if you feel a little, it's something you want to do. I'm I'm happy to help. And That's if you awesome. want to contribute, been through those big old sites. Don't get the free copy. Buy it. Um, honestly, actually, I went to Amazon to find to get the the physical copy. I wanted the physical copy so I can have it here with us and also so you can sign it for me. Um, but. So anybody else, like, dude, it's it's worth the buy. I, I appreciate think. it. You know, I appreciate it. From someone that. that's not an avid reader who prefers not to read and rather play video games, dude, it's it's good, and I'm going to finish it. I appreciate that. I, I think the only reason that I, I went the other way, because everyone was like, no, 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 sell, sell, sell. 
And I'm a huge uh, fan of rap. And I heard Biggie... Um, so back in Biggie's days, they used to have uh, the rapper's people, all his buddies, if they caught you bootlegging, they essentially beat the shit out of you. Yeah. And Biggie got his people and said, go give this shit away for free. I'm not Biggie, but I feel like if you have an interest in me, I have several other series that I'm, I'm working on, very much in the same little vein, universe, whatever you want to call it. And so I, you know, um, this is a passion. This is a, a, an itch that I scratch. And if you want to hang out and, and read it, gosh, uh, the gift is not, you know, yours. It's mine to, to, to have you there. So, um, and again, man, I, I really appreciate not only you doing this, but the friendship that, fuck, I guarantee you we're going to have. We're going to have a good time. Yeah, I'm going to sure. be your new worm. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to worm. <laughs> yeah. He's out there. Um, he still watches. But uh, but yeah, man. And so so on, on a positive note, man, because I feel this is a hundred fucking percent um, uh, exemplary of what I'm about to tell you is when you grow up, you, you're 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 told who to be based on what you want to do, and I think that whenever you do that, there's a side of you that hides vulnerability, and what I my my uh too slow too hard too fast. soft or too slow, slow. okay too hard too fast <laughs> moment is that dude when i opened up about these vulnerabilities i can't tell you how many people reached out and whether they had heart problems cancer whatever the case was it was these beautiful little touch points where people were like dude i'm too and i feel like it's one of those things where once you know, not to to be crude or nothing, but once someone realizes, like, oh, that dude shits the bed too, all these people are like, hey, man, I'm not perfect too. And I've developed, that's why I'll give the book away for free. I'll hang out with anybody who wants to because I've developed these amazing friendships with people who are like, hey, I'm not perfect. And as soon as they realize that everyone else isn't either and there are folks like me who are okay with sharing that imperfection. Um, dude, you come up with the best friendships. Yeah. And so uh, that's my too hard, too fast thing is that I took too long to realize that, man. I'm 40 years old. I don't know what MS is going to give me from a, from a trajectory perspective. I hope it's more not only for my kids and for the stuff that I enjoy, but to, to hang out with people like you, man, to, to have a good time. Damn, dude. You almost had me. You almost had me. Oh, I forgot. Be, the Chiyon thing. No, no. Well, no, no. I did. Yeah, I forgot about it. I didn't think it was going to happen. Dude, honestly, I've never. There's been a lot of heartfelt stories on this podcast. Very appreciative about everybody that's shared that with me. But I almost cried right there. I felt a tear. And I said, no, no, no. no. Pull it back. Te van a pegar. Te van a pegar. But, <laughs> and, and to end with that, like, like the book. It, it it has has me questioning not questioning or like thinking about my own mortality and what I want to live leave behind and leave for my son and have for my son and that the best I know there was a, it was a quote uh, and I've I've heard this quote before but in the book there was a moment that a story where Marco is. Uh, piggyback, like having her da his daughter, like do a piggyback backwards moment. kangaroo, yeah, yeah backwards yeah. kangaroo, and um, so she jumps on his back, uh, and she remembers like, you know, there's a moment where we pick up our our child and put him down and never pick them up again, and when I first became a dad, that was one of the things like, I'm gonna pick him up to like can't anymore, and part of the reasons like, and I told my wife was like. My goal is to be as strong as I can so I can pick them up for as long as I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I I know that's also another pulling on the heart string where we're supposed to end in a positive note. That's a positive. It's a positive, man. Yeah. As long as you know that that happens, I think that that's a positive because you'll hopefully uh, keep doing it. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Uh, within Normal Limits, it's a, it's a great book. I haven't finished it. I will finish it. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you, brother.
What a good time. I was going to shake my mother hand. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we've gone too hard, too fast. Uh, remember, there to be you, there to be weird. Bye.